Okay, it's the time you've all been waiting for. We can now ch finally chat about the midterm and exactly what's expected of you for the midterm. For the midterm, we're going to be having fun with CSS Zen Garden. Uh, your book talks about CSS Zen Garden, and I'm sure that if at least if you've had the style sheet class previously, I know you guys have used CSS Zen Garden. And if you've had other courses with me within Co-op, you've definitely seen as, seen CSS Zen Garden and explored it. Basically, main, mainly, f if you've taken classes with me, I've used it in the past to just hit home the fact and the need uh, of having an external style sheet. And as I've been talking about so far in the course, we definitely know how important that is to leverage the power of CSS with sites, especially for, for massive sites, because then you can update the styles in one place and all those changes are made site-wide. So for our midterm, these are the main things that we're going to be doing. Um, so basically, your midterm assesses these four areas, all of which are covered in your book. So number one, utilize external CSS to control the visual design of a website. Um, and it uses, your book discusses CSS in Garden as an example. Utilize number two, utilize a conditional statement for Internet Explorer. So we all know the difficulty it is designing pages uh, to make sure that they parse both in other browsers and Internet Explorer because of what Internet Explorer does for the box model. So normally um, using conditional statements for Internet Explorer it mainly has to do for layout, but we're actually going to have some fun with it and use it in terms of actually having a completely different visual design for our site in Internet Explorer versus having our site done with um, uh, other browsers like Firefox, Chrome, etc. And then number three, using an image editor to update images to have either a hot or cold themed colors. And we talked about that's discussed in your book and that's what's basically going to be showing up on your style sheets. So basically you're going to have a hot design for Internet Explorer and a cold design for all of the other browsers. And then finally, number four, using an external style sheet to control typography. This week we got into talking about typography and your book talks about typography heavily so basically you're going to be updating the style sheets um, that you get access to to control typography. So now let's talk about how we can get started. So the first thing that you're going to need to do, well actually let me just say this, um, all you're doing is updating a style sheet. You're updating a style sheet, updating some images, and updating typography. You are not creating a style sheet from scratch. You're not creating the HTML from scratch. You are getting your the raw HTML from CSS Zen Garden. Um, so you can go there and freely download the raw HTML file that's used for that page, and then it's visually designed with the style sheet. The fun thing is what you're going to do is you're uh, when you go to this area I'm about to show you, you're going to go there and there's, I think as of right now, there's a little over 200 different examples of people who have taken the raw content from CSS and Garden and visually designed, it, visually designed it differently with a different style sheet. So you are actually going to choose one of the new updated style sheets from CSS and Garden. The first thing that you need to do is you need to share which design that you want to have fun with in the discussion area. So here is CSS Zen Garden. You guys have explored this before. Like I was saying, you can choose the different style sheets over here, um, which these are called using a style sheet switcher to call up these different style sheets. The creator of CSS Zen Garden, David Shea, has a blog where he actually has, as of right now, looks like 210 different examples of how people have used that raw content from CSS Zen Garden to create all these different sites. So you actually can use this blog to check out all of these different sites. And the purpose of the first step is to choose which of these that you would like to update. So I would suggest clicking through, find one that you like, and then tell the class which one you've chosen and why you like it. So now what we need to do is talk about how to set up your new site directory with the following three items you're going to have the original XHTML or an HTML5 document saved at the root level of your new directory. Then you're going to have two directories within your root level. You're going to have an underscore INC which is where you're going to be storing your two different CSS files and then you're also going to have an images directory where you're going to be saving both your hot and cold redesigned images. Let's take a look at that. So let's chat about the folder structure that I'm asking you to set up. Here's my desktop. On my desktop I have the midterm folder. When I open up the midterm folder, like I said, at the root level, you have this, this original CSS 
uh, I'm sorry, the original XHTML document, or if you have taken the HTML5 class, feel free to use the HTML5 document that I've linked you to. And then at the root level, we have two different directories. We have an underscore INC directory, which will push the directory up at the top. And inside here, you're going to have your cold and hot CSS. And then inside your images directory, that's where you are going to have your alternate versions for either hot or cold image designs. And again, of course, there's no special characters. All files are descriptively named, no spaces, stuff like that. And just to, to plug, like I always do, um, web designers don't design content. We don't write content, just as this is an example of content. Like, let's say you receive this content from a client. This is just the raw content. But what we do is we visually design this content with CSS so that they can be parsed in the browser. The next step we need to talk about is adding your conditional statement so that your hot CSS will be called up when you are when the user is accessing your page from Internet Explorer and then by default the cold CSS will be used when your user accesses your page with any of the other style sheets when you do this step you need to make sure that your book is a little out of date in that it gives you an incorrect it gives you an incorrect conditional statement because we don't need to add the get so now all we have to do is write is add in the comment um, conditional statement if IE. And now then you're going to get to the step where you need to add or essentially save your two different external CSS uh, external CSS style sheets in your include folder. And what we're going to then now we need to discuss is how we can actually get the original external CSS from your newly from the design that you've chosen to have fun with. So let's chat about how we can find the CSS for the design that I've chosen. And as you'll notice, they don't make it easy. If you click um, the CSS file, you're downloading the original CSS file from uh, the original CSS in Garden. But what we do is what we want is we want this CSS file. So the easy answer is to just take out the this right here. If you just take that out and hit enter, then you get the style sheet. Okay? Let me show that again. If you just take out this from the file name, I'm sorry, from the, the URL, you get the style sheet. Now what am I doing? Right click, view source, inside here, right here, they have their own style sheet switcher and it's telling you to import this specific style sheet right here and all I'm doing is I'm placing that, I'm placing that right here. So again, let's just remove this. So there's the style sheet. Next we need to choose at least three images to update in your chosen design from the, the version of CSS Zen Garden that you've chosen to um, have fun with. At least three, I know many students are going to choose more than three, but the minimum is three. Um, all of these images are going to be coded um, as background images in the CSS document. So let's talk about where we can, how we can get to those images. So now what you need to do is you need to choose which images that you'd like to update with a hot and cold design. So all of these images are all background images that are, are basically visually are, are referenced in the style sheets that you guys just access. In Firefox, I'm able to right click on these and just select view background image. View background image. So after you choose all of them. Now sometimes some of them are a little bit more tricky to get, like that one is. So what you can do is when you're searching in the style sheet, you can find out where that one actually is by finding where it is referenced in the style sheet. So I'm just going to scroll down and this is just, <laughs> I'm just going to give a plug for making sure that you comment and have your style sheets very organized. I mean look at how great. Uh, my creator for the one that I chose, Brian Williams, look at how great uh, he organized his style sheet. Look how easy it is for us to get in and work with. I mean, he clearly says, you know, here's all the styles for the layout, and then down here, these are the ones that we're concerned with right now, for example, the images. And the image that I'm actually looking for is this logo on Sunburst JPEG. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this and then place it up here 
at the end of the 126 directory and plus enter and there we go so now that I've chosen all the designs that I want to work with you know you're gonna right click save image as and then you're gonna save it in your directory that you have stored on the desktop and then once you get it in that directory on the desktop in your images directory you're gonna to need to like I said create two different versions of it create a hot version and a cold version and you're gonna be doing that in your image editor there's different ways to do that um, Definitely uh, be sure that you're exploring the resources within the course that talk to you about adding filters or adjusting colors and, and things like that. But basically, once you get all of those edited, because I'm not going to demo how to make this look cold or make this look hot, um, but after you get that done, then what you're going to be doing is you're going to be updating your style sheet. So after you get access to those images and you've put them in your image editor and updated them so that they are hot and cold versions, you then need to update both the hot and CSS style sheets to reflect the newly updated images. So let me show you what that looks like in my style sheet. So let's take a look at how I've referenced these new images that I created, the hot and cold images, in my style sheet. First let me show you them from the images directory. Like I said, I have cold images and hot images. And I did much more than just three, but that's just, well, how many did I do? One, two, three, four, five. I did five different ones because I really wanted to update the site. I didn't want to have aspects of the site missing and things like that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you this in action. So I'm going to right click and I'm making sure I'm opening it in my default browser, which is Firefox. And then I can also right click and open this in Internet Explorer. So these are my hot and cold designs. Let's take a look at the Firefox design and see how it's referenced. Right click in Firefox, view page source. I then can scroll down and find the hot CSS, which is linked right here. Click that. And then you scroll down and notice here I have updated these to say um, side body hot, logo on sunburst hot, poor Richard hot. And then, of course, for Internet Explorer, let me show you that one. And then also from Firefox, I can call up the cold CSS by just typing up here at the directory. I'm up here at the URL, underscore inc, forward slash cold dot CSS. And this is the cold CSS. And just scroll down to the bottom where the images are. And notice here, side body cold, sunburst cold, poor Richard cold. Um, which other ones did I update? watermark, cold, stuff like that. And finally, step seven, you need to update the topography for both the hot and cold designs. Um, at minimum, you need to update the H1, the H2s, and the paragraph text. And finally, it goes without saying, you need to make sure that all your files are descriptively named, no special characters, no spaces, and then organize within the file structure like I've described for you. And then we're going to be submitting the assignment in two different places. You're going to be submitting it for the class and the discussion area so that we can all view and discuss it. And then we're also going to need to be sending it to me to grade officially for your midterm. Um, and be sure that you zip both of those. When you submit it to me, I'm going to be doing all of your grade through the assignment area and giving you personalized feedback in the assignment area. And as always, let the class, I know, class or I know if you have any, any questions. Be sure that you share those in the general questions area. Um, have fun with this. Have a good week.